Migration from Venezuela has been going on for decades. The International Organization for Migration estimates more than a million residents have left the country in the past two years. A mother shows cell phone video of her daughter, once a dancer in the orange dress, now nearly immobilized by a brain tumor. But there's no cancer medicine in Venezuela, so her mother and Yuri Fuentes will try and make the difficult journey to Colombia. Venezuelans are now the largest group by nationality seeking asylum in the U.S. Millions of Venezuelans have fled the surrounding countries in South and Central America. It was a scene of violent attacks on Venezuelans after a local shopkeeper was robbed. Some Brazilians targeted Venezuelan refugees. This was all burned. They burned everything. I had to run to the other side of the border not to get burned. I was inside my tent with my children. To look at the push, why are they specifically leaving Venezuela? Well, this is a country in, in many ways, economic collapse. Most doctors have left due to lack of salaries. Those still here work for nearly free. It has very, very serious rate of inflation, estimated to be about 100,000% at the moment. For men and women telling us, go back to Venezuela, you're criminals. Also saying this, uh, the Venezuelans who have come back because they couldn't find what they were looking for in other countries. We've been hearing reports of that. What is happening with them? Well, this, that's true. I mean, the, the Venezuelan government, I, I should say, does argue that a lot of this uh, migration crisis we're seeing at the moment, they say it has been exaggerated. They argue that this is, as, and to quote them, they say this is fake news, that they argue that there are plenty of uh, Colombians, for example, uh, that, do, uh, that are coming to Venezuela. And as you mentioned, some Venezuelans that have tried to go and have since decided it's not for them. Now, uh, yes, there are some that have... Uh, uh, taking up Venezuelan government offers to return, but so far the numbers are very small. Families at the border wait for their turn, wait for what they hope is a better life. I came here to work and help my family, because you can't back there. I'm with my homegirl Yo. Sylvia and we are going to her house. She's taking me to her house to meet her mother, her family. But uh, on the way, we're going to be stopping at somewhere dope. So I can't wait to show you some of the beautiful countryside of Venezuela. I don't know if this place is considered country, country. It's like a city, but it's very country to me. It's very uh, tropical and greeny. I love this place so far. It reminds me of other places I've been to, but Man, the scenery here is just amazing. Enjoy the ride as this Venezuelan woman takes me um, to her house. All right, guys, uh, just to give you an idea, um, in order to get to my friend's house, it's gonna take us like around five hours and we're gonna be going through a bunch of different towns um, to get there. I thought she I thought she lived in Merida. Don't it to be even more? In Trujillo. In the Trujillo. Okay. Okay. Parte también de aquí de Merida, Los Andes. I'm just to see. Mm -hmm. The town. Son ciudad como más grande. Eh, donde yo estoy, la ciudad Valera no es tan ay que el wow de grande, pero también tiene sitios turísticos. Just like that, guys, the terrain has changed. We're actually going up these mountainous road and it's getting very really cold. All right, guys, we made it to uh, the town. This uh, town is called Paramo. It's really high in the mountains, and uh, there was rumor that there is snow happening here. I could see that um, based off of, yeah, it's uh, very humid here. 
no llegamos cuando estaba nevando. Sí. No sé si esta brisita es para nevar. <laughs> It is super cold here. en todas partes en Venezuela. Bueno, Pasan la foto, pasan la foto. El águila allá ahí. Pasan la foto. La capilla. Mm -hmm. Adiós. Uh, so there's a, like a ahí. church. Uh, allá donde está aquella gente parada se observa. Se observa, wow. se va. No puede ver nada ahora. Pero hay mucha neblina. No traemos la planela para el equipo. <laughs> the cool guys. <laughs> Good energy, I love it. They are very, very cool. <laughs> so I guess those guys are doctors, doctors, medicals. And he's just the driver. <laughs> so, wow. La Gloria del Liberator. This is a Simone Boulevard, entonces. A monumental for Simone Boulevard. Okay. Foto. Foto. Of course. Otra vez. <laughs> you can't see it. There's a lot of cold air. We're gonna see if we can get something to eat. Some. Maybe that'll ease my stomach up. Uh, we'll make some warm stuff they sell here. All right, super dope. Wow. <laughs> This is super cool. Es justo y necesario. Okay. Mm. Oh my god, so good. This is what I needed. <laughs> This is what I needed. Siempre frío aquí. Siempre. Siempre hay frío, lo que pasa es que no encontramos la nieve. I'm like jitterish. Be getting some form of corn here. Okay. We're gonna get it with some butter and cheese. Okay, rico. Rico sabroso. <laughs> Divino. <laughs> Alright guys, after driving another hour and a half, uh, we made it to the town of the place actually, which is <laughs> at the bottom of the mountain. And yeah, there's more town life here. Life is more simpler here. Things aren't as complicated. It's beautiful here, wow. Muy bonito. Sí. Más bonito que el centro de Mérida. En realidad es más bonito. Que qué trabajaba yo. Me oh. atrevido. <laughs> Guys, we just got pulled over. Um, it, apparently, there's a lot of these checkpoints. They're really well set up checkpoints, and you'll have military there. And for the most part, we've been going through them like a breeze, but this is the first time uh, we got stopped and I got interrogated. It was a quick interrogation. Normally around this time, from what I'm hearing from Carlos from Volpe, the other YouTuber I've been hanging out with, he's been telling me that they can uh, use that time to see if they can get some extra money from you. But uh, my, for me, it was, uh, it was smooth. Uh, I didn't talk. So at first they were like, why is he not talking? And then, you know, they got me out of the car and so I gave them my Spanish and um, everything was cool. It was like, How, when did you arrive? And then um, they asked me um, what I'm up to and I'm like, like, I'm basically vacationing and I'm right now I'm visiting her and her family. And so 
they talked to the, the driver and her first. They pulled them out of the car and left me in the car. I guess they wanted to hear the, her story first. But the, the guy, you know, you know what I mean? You can tell, like, well, I don't, you can't, I don't know. If you can look at a person's face, you can see this guy's like a really honest um, a military um, personnel. It, wasn't, it didn't seem like he was looking for extra. But if he found some mess, he would have, you know what I mean? So it was an interesting uh, story. Yeah, I left my camera on the bottom of it right here and um, he found it <laughs> so I was worried about him like oh, getting crazy about my camera but uh, he's like what is that I said that's a camera <laughs> he's like what? they did ask her pregunta de ti que que se enamoró tuyo el policía se enamoró tuyo de mi claro Ah, no, 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 porque yo no habla por eso. Uh, He thought I was nada pensado, yo soy venezolano. No, porque como cuando te preguntó allá y tú no respondiste. Eso el momento conozco que yo. Exacto, no le entendiste lo que te dije. Because uh, basically when he asked me, he was expecting me to say, oh, Mérida. But I was like, I was going to say Estados Unidos, but I read her answer. And so that's when they got like, oh, where's this guy from for real? You know what I'm saying? So uh, not too much trouble from your book. Because we have had stories of people coming into Venezuela and they're being accused of being something they weren't or whatever. So you got to be careful with that. So uh, they probably looked at me and say, hey, yeah, he ain't doing nothing. <laughs> He ain't doing nothing but eating some food out here. <laughs> yeah. Alright guys, it looks like we are close to her house. It's filming the energy um, of the place. It's This is considered a city, but it feels like a town to me. Yeah. Ese lugar es peligroso. ¿En dónde? ¿Aquí? Sí. No. Para nada. We're gonna go to her house, meet her mom, her, her family. I think her mom is cooking something for me. I'm going to be checking into a hotel nearby and hopefully get the party started. I want to party in this um, this city right here. And yeah, enjoy my time. And then tomorrow we'll be going to uh, a very famous tourist destination that's nearby. But uh, yeah, I'm excited to be here, man. You know, I, just know, I know this woman since 2020 and it's just crazy how I met her and now all of a sudden I'm in her hometown it's an amazing feeling my friend represents millions of people who have left the country of Venezuela to find a better life or to find money and uh, to send back to their family so I met her in Colombia um, she was selling coffee and candy <laughs> when I met her and I ended up uh, offering her a job to cook for me and make YouTube videos and that's how our relationship got started so if you want to see those cooking videos they're on my channel uh -huh. okay <laughs> they were legendary a lot of people uh, love those videos so but we are here wow bonita wow oh that's how you been living that's how you living okay okay let me take care of this driver and um we'll be good here we go Buena. hola muy bien how you doing <laughs> thank you thank you Ay, ay, qué bueno, bendito sea Dios. Ajá. Y ella, yo conozco tú. Pásale. Muchos fotos contigo. Ella, ella lo ve mucho. Ay. Wow. Pase adelante y se sienta. Okay. Ya, déjame poner eso. Pase adelante y agarre fresco. Bonita casa, baby. Wow. Y esto es un apartamentito, una urbanización muy pequeña, como pero puede no, observar. Ah, pero bonita, amor. Estamos a la orden. <laughs> ok. Wow. It's beautiful. This is his Ah, wow! <laughs> Check it out. Cool. Nosotros llegué muy rápido. Sí, sí. Sí. Yo veo si sí, mi esposo ahorita salió. Okay. Y me dice, ellos vienen llegando como a las cuatro. 
Ajá, eh, sí, ya, ya son casi. Wow. Las tres y media. Uh -huh. Ya para las cuatro. Ah, wow. Beautiful. Beautiful. I love how the window opens up here. Really nice. Tú eres joven. <laughs> Her mother is so young, you know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. Ah, ya lo ven los videos de ella cocinando por mí. Ajá, hoy me toca a mí. Okay. Bueno, amor, si quieres. Vamos a ver quién tiene más sazón. Oh, oh, oh ah. we're gonna find out who cooks better, her or her mother. <laughs> ¿Cómo estás, princesa? Sí. ¿Está bien? Ok. Wow. Vamos a ver, vamos a ver un poco. Let's see this kitchen real quick. Sí. Wow. Mmm. Sí. Plantana. Oh, my God. Oh, yes. Wow. Wow. Yes. Uh, <laughs> y también le hice la ensalada que la tengo en la nevera. Wow. Oh my God. Okay. Yes. Perfecta. Okay. Yo voy a hacer un pabellón, pero si todavía está aquí, Dios mediante, uh -huh. se lo hago. Con okay. Mucho gusto se lo voy a hacer. No, mo, ese. Oh my God. Claro. Ya sabes esas deli delicateces. Con mucho cariño se lo hice. Con okay. Mucho cariñito para que coman. Wow. A mí me gusta mucho la cocina. Sí, yo lo ve. Y a la hija. Ajá, wow. A mí me gusta mucho cocinar y hacer cosas así, me gusta. She says she loves to cook. That's why she really enjoys doing that. Wow, okay. What's going on? This is our sister right here. Hay <laughs> muchas partes lindas que conocer, te informo. Está la puerta, la lagunita, muy, o sea, bonito. Para nosotros o sea, es algo, algo turístico. Que frío. Es bien para ti, El clima es frío. Muy También bonito. es frío el clima. Uh -huh. Está una parte que le llaman Isnotu, que es de. Um, Doctor José Gregorio Hernández. Que ¿Quién es él? Ese es, es un médico que fue muy humilde, muy pobre y ayudó mucha, hizo muchos milagros aquí en Venezuela. M milagro. Milagros. Sí, milagros. Muchos milagros. Él todavía él lo, vive. vive no, no, ya está él muerto. Es, él está muerto y entonces tiene una parte que es puro de él. Se llama Hinotu. Es cerca de acá. Mm. Muchas cosas. Y el, el, la estatua. Esa es queda en Trujillo. Esa es en la capital. Ok, en ok. En la capital, es no, en el, en el estado. Es él. Es él. El doctor José Gregorio Hernández. Oh, wow, wow. They keep a, a figure of him. Oh, nice. Wow. Médico de los pobres, médico wow. de los venezolanos. Hace muchos milagros, ha hecho muchos milagros. ¿Es famoso en todas partes de Venezuela? Eh, sí, sí. sí. Oh, wow. Yo lo tengo aquí, de frente. Wow, that's cool. Ahora lo ven como tú te gusta Coca-Cola. <laughs> sí. That's Pepsi y Coca -Cola. También yo la guardo para llenar agua, porque tenemos mucho problema del agua. Ay, mucho, sí, mucho, sí, mucho. sí. Hay veces, yo estaba en, en Isla uh, de Margarita. Sí, y el, no, te, no te salía agua en la ducha. No, bueno, la luz, la luz. Ah, la luz, sí. Igual que aquí, aquí no, hay luz. no hay luz, se fue a las 3, llega a las 6. 3 horas dura. ¿Solo es luz por tres días o tres horas? O tres horas. ¿Cada día? Wow, ok. Es más fácil aquí en Venezuela. No ah, wow. Oh, Pero wow. Vamos a servir en las comiditas. So that's why they have like, they don't have electric um, stoves. They have a uh, gas stove so they can cook whenever. But they have three hours worth of electricity every single day. So right now, a la tres en la, hasta la que? Hasta las seis. Que tres tiene... horas, tres horas dura la luz. Wow. Tres horas de racionamiento. Lo que pasa es que allá donde nosotros estábamos en Mérida no se iba la luz porque yo creo que el edificio tiene planta. Ah, ok, ok. Pero es un cosa normal uh, en muchos partes. Eso en todos los estados aquí en Venezuela, que se va la luz. O sea, es como un razonamiento. En la noche también se va la luz. Sí, a veces. Ok, wow. So, I didn't know that. Sí, es una cosa que yo nunca sabía porque yo siempre estaba en hoteles y... Porque la mayoría debe ser de las cosas donde tú te aíslas, este, están con planta y entonces, claro, por las bromas de los turistas, le ponen planta para que no se les vaya a ustedes la luz. Ok. Wow. Pero aquí en mi casa no hay planta. Bueno, este es chévere, es muy chévere, ok, yo.
you get ready for this. This is Sylvia's room right here. It is super pink, yo. It is pink. Are you seeing this, guys? <laughs> okay, with the white trim, and this is pink. You can't see it because it's the GoPro won't get it right. But look, even the this, this makes it more pink. <laughs> the window. <laughs> and look at her. Uh huh. And a two. And my 15 years. This is her 15 years. Wow. Linda como siempre. Wow, guys. <laughs> So you can see it better. Here you go. So yeah, that's her, guys. You see this right here? Oh my God, <laughs> that is her right there. Okay, wow. <laughs> this is her for her 15. It's for her sweet 15th birthday. You know, like in America, the women like to do. do... Okay. There's another one. Oh, another picture. Oh, she want to make sure I see all the pictures. <laughs> Halloween, okay. Sección fotográfica. No, esa es mi primera vez de algo así. Ah, sí, aquí acostumbran mucho a hacer estas cosas cuando se cumple años, en los 15 años. Sí. Mucha la diferencia, que era una niña, ahora yo soy una mujer. Oh, no. <laughs> wow. Wow. Ok, I guess this is mine right here. Wow, guys, so we eating some lasagna and some, oh my gosh, some nice potato salad. This is good, but it looks like sweet plantains. And you cannot go without the Coca-Cola. This is her infatuation with Coca-Cola. We finally figured it out, wow. Wow, people, families, this is, this is the highlight. I know a lot of you guys like my party videos, but these are the videos I cherish more. Meeting people and eating food. Wow. ¿Cuál es tu favorita comida? Mi favorita es pabellón. Pabellón. Pasticho, me fascina. Ajá. Yo recuerdo cuando ella está haciendo el pabellón. Rico. ¿Y a ti? Yo te gusta... ¿Sabes? Mi favorita comida venezolana era la reina, la reina pepiada. Ah, este yo tengo. Sí, yo, yo tengo la reina pepiada. Es, ah, es fácil para hacer este, ¿verdad? Cuando quieras se las hago, con mucho oh. gusto. <laughs> se las hago cuando usted quiera. Cuando ok, usted quiera. gracias. All right, guys, I'm going to Mi dig in. Está. Yo, yo conozco que está en ahora en um, Perú. Sí, se me fue. Ok. Hace, ya va a tener un año ahorita en, ju en julio que se me fue. ¿Qué tal allá? Pues no es fácil. Sí. No es fácil. Sí. Él se fue con una esperanza de estudiar. Ok. Porque aquí no pudo. Pero él dice que va a esperar y esto, pero el tiempo de Dios es perfecto. Uh -huh. Y esperemos a ver. ¿Cómo le va? Hasta los momentos está bien porque tiene trabajo. ¿Quién? Oh, bueno. Es bueno. lo importante. Porque usted sabe que estar en otro país hay que trabajar. Sí, sí. Sin trabajo es difícil. Sí, uh -huh. sí. Uh -huh. <laughs> She's the oldest here, guys. Okay. Yo soy la vieja. Ella es la mayor. <laughs> Ella tiene 26. El varón tiene 10. Las edades no se dicen, ¿no? <laughs> Ella tiene 9. Ok. Oh, wow. 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 Jesse, uh, Jesse 9. ¿Es bien? 19 el varón. Oh, wow, ok. Yo tengo 26 años de casada. Ah, oh, ok. Tiene ella. Oh, wow. Yo tengo hambre. Ok. Right. Buen provecho. Espero que le guste. Oh, ya yeah, yo conozco que yo te gusta. Yeah. I know I'm gonna like this food. All right, let's try. We'll start with the lettuce uh, right here. Mm -hmm. mm. So good, guys. Oh my gosh, guys, this is so good. Muy rico. The lasagna, guys. Oh. Muy bueno, more. Yes, yeah, this is good, guys. Mm. All right, I'm gonna enjoy the food, guys. We'll be back. Para mi mamá, tome, llévese.
¡Ay, qué bonito! ¡Ay, qué bueno! Estas son para Fabiana Patricia. <risa> Me quedo feliz, ok. Mírasela. Y el otro participante no se encuentra. Ah, oh, acuerdo. Ahora, ahora más tarde cuando llegue. Guys, uh, so we get to see more of her uh, sweet 15th birthday uh, celebration. So, wow. No. Sí. Esa es mi hermano. That's her brother right there. That's her father right there. <laughs> That's the mom. <laughs> Well, okay. So she basically started preparing for uh, the Sweet 15 a year before the festivities, man. It's a, a very serious um, event for the Latin women in South America. Wow. Okay. ¿Quién es ellos? Eh, mi abuela, la mamá de mi mamá. Okay, that's her mother. Eh, una amiga. So this is uh, her mother's mother, the grandmother. Y uh yo -huh. And then uh, that's the, uh, the amiga of uh, someone. Okay. Para una carrera. Ok. Your sister, Amana. Eh, brother. Amana. Prima. Prima, your cousin. And that's the cousin. Cousin, cousin, husband. More, tú sales más claro de tu uh, uh, Amanas. <laughs> Porque ellos son de diferente papá. Ok. Yo soy de otro papá. Ok, so she was from a different father, but her. Um, Her brothers and sisters had a different father, so the, she came out a little bit more clear. But her mom was a chocolate sister. Okay. Aquí es muy chévere, es no loco. La verdad. Muy tranquilo. Sí. En Estados Unidos, cuando la gente piense de Venezuela, no piense es tranquilo. Piense es desorden. Bueno, hay problemas aquí, pero no como salen en las noticias. Sí, sigue. O sea, nosotros aquí prácticamente, eh, como tú dices, Venezuela ahorita por la situación país, pues se nos ha complicado muchas cosas uh -huh. en, en todos los sentidos, pero uno trabaja para el día a día, uh -huh. pero estamos trabajando. Uh -huh. Menos difícil que la vida de allá. Yo tengo una amiga que ya estaba en Perú y ella se fue a Estados Unidos con su esposo y su hijo. Uh -huh. Eh, creo que él ya entró en Estados Unidos ilegal porque no tiene yeah, it's no tiene close, sí. este llegó a México se fue en avión de Perú para México pero creo que pagó el doble de los pasajes porque no tenía los papeles sí. para que ella la dejaran entrar por México por allá de México me imagino que sería por Coyote para entrar a Estados Unidos y ella dice allá allá dice que ella o sea Dice que es otro mundo, pero tiene que reventarse por la plata. Porque trabajar más. O, sí. Eso es como ella dice. Y tiene que pagar más. Flotación. Porque ella dice que ella en una hora en un restaurante se ganan 14 dólares. Y en, y en un arriendo tiene que pagar 800 dólares. O sea, ¿cuánto no tiene ella que trabaja para reunir 800 dólares con un artículo? Sí, o sea. Es Gana más, pero tiene que pagar más. Yo entiendo, sí, es como tú dices, mm. que, o sea, se gana más, hace el sacrificio, pero este, hay más gastos y es más caro. Mm -hmm. Todo lo contrario de acá. Mm -hmm. Pero sí hay más, más, más ventaja en el sentido de más posibilidades de muchas cosas más. Mm -hmm. Aquí es muy difícil ahorita sí. encontrar. Pero aquí son mal pagados. Ajá. Ah, sí. Aquí son muy mal pagados. O sea, somos muy mal pagados. Yo trabajo por el Ministerio de Educación y soy muy mal pagada. Pero, uh -huh. bueno, pero bueno, yo sé. Pero tu trabajo es muy importante. Claro. ¿Cuánto una persona gana en mensual ah, en dólares? Ay, Leo. Ay, rico. Eh, aquí el sueldo ahorita está en 128 bolívares. ¿Qué es este en dólares? 20 dólares. 20, 20 dólares mensual. ¿Mensual? Ah. Por un trabajo, wow. Yo que trabajo en el Ministerio de Educación, eso es lo que nos cancela. ¿28 dólares? 20. Dólares mensual. Wow, baby. Entonces, eso, León, es lo que yo le digo a ella. ¿Cómo, cómo, cómo maneja con 20 dólares mensual? Uno compra lo necesario. 
uh -huh. o sea, eh, uno gasta más, qué sé yo, uno hace más, que si, arepa, luma, o sea, uno el venezolano es muy arepero, sí, uh -huh. y pues uno, este, poquito u otro, pues uno se va bandeando poco a poco, pero eso no nos llega al límite de todo lo que necesitamos. 1998, ¿cómo se dice ese año? 1998. Sí, ¿cómo es aquí en Venezuela ese tiempo? Eh, ¿La gente gana más o cómo? Pues sí, sí, es que an antes de que pasara todo esto con este nuevo gobierno, uh -huh. eh, eh, no, sí, se sí nos manteníamos. Uh -huh. Si sí alcanzaba el sueldo para comprar en uno hacia los mercados que daba para comprar algo que si sí, quería un pantalón o algo, unas botas, qué sé yo. Y si se salía de vez en cuando los fines de semana, los domingos, que es familiar, si se podía salir a comprar algo, mm. a comer algo, a pasarla en familia. Pero eh, ya tenemos años así que no, ya es, esto nos, ya. Ca nos cambió la vida totalmente, en todos los sentidos. Todo, todo. todo. Gente. Por eso hay gente que sale. Y... Por eso es que los venezolanos, nosotros los venezolanos estamos saliendo del país. Ese es uno de los motivos que nos llevó a esto. ¿No hay, hay um, algo que cambia un poco? No. La gente dice que es un poquito más mejor, ¿no? Eh, eh, como puedes ver, eh, los servicios, fíjate, no hay luz. Ay, sí. El agua. Y este, ¿qué te puedo decir? ¿Qué pasa con el agua? ¿Hay veces sirve o no sirve? Se dañan las bombas y ahorita por el problema de las lluvias, uh -huh. como hay derrumbes para lo frío, uh -huh. entonces aquí hay un llenado, uh -huh. un llenado de bombeos que está en el cumbe, que hay una boca toma donde nos surte el agua en todo el municipio de Carvajal. Y entonces mientras que no arreglen ese problema, no nos surten el agua. ¿Qué fue, mira? Ah, oh, wow. ¿Ves? Ah. Hola, yo Y entonces sí. son cosas que. Mire, yo Hay sí, cosas para, que uno sobre una sobrevive el día a día, sí lo hay, porque Dios no nos desampara. ¿Cómo? Pero sí hay más necesidad porque nos limitamos. No es para ir a dejar. Ah, no, no podemos hacerlo porque no lo tenemos. Sí, tenemos es para, para llevar comida. a un amigo para el hotel el Amir, ¿sabes? Es muy importante, yo conozco, por eso yo quiero. Ven aquí y. Para ver cómo tú vives, bonita, sí. <ríe> muy bonita, muy Esto cómodo. Lo compramos con mucho sacrificio. Sí. Este departamento yo tengo aquí, tenemos 13 años viviendo ya. Uh -huh. Aquí yo lo compré por ley de política cuando empecé a trabajar. Y mi esposo tenía una plática reunida y lo pagamos. Ok. Fue lo primerito que hice, comprarme una aquí. Ok. Ya pagó. Ya pagamos. Sí. Ok. Uh, ¿Cuánto es un apartamento aquí? aquí? Ahorita lo están vendiendo económicos. Creo que valen como... 15, 18, 18 mil dólares. No. Sí, más o menos, Silvia. Sí, El señor de allá abajo estaba vendiendo en 16. 16 mil dólares por su apartamento. Mm, ok. ¿Es grande? Igual. Como es de tres habitaciones, dos baños, la sala y el comedor. Ya viene el taxi. Ok, vamos nosotros. <ríe> Para ver cómo es ese lugar. Ok. acostumbrando. ¿Qué tal, qué tal, Mary? What's up, guys? So, now we're going to my hotel. I invited them all to just hang out with me. Um, I just need to be around some good internet. They wanted me to stay at their, their spot. I just didn't want to overimpose. But uh, yeah, I will be coming back and yeah, it's, uh, just getting first-hand experience about uh, living in Venezuela it has been eye-opening for me, very eye-opening. I feel very uh, grateful and uh, blessed to get the opportunity to know this side of uh, Venezuela. And I like this car too. <laughs> Bumblebee, <laughs> the Transformer. <laughs> This is a nice car right here, right? Yeah. You see that number on the windshield? Basically, that's the number they put for um, people that get in a line to get gas. So there's no uh, disorder or you know, someone can't argue I was here first or whatnot. But every time he goes to the line, um, they'll 
give him a new number or something like that. We were actually driving, and it was he was showing me how a guy was tilting his motorcycle just so he can get a little bit more extra gas out of it. He was like literally leaning it to the side so he could get more gas to get into the, the motorcycle. This country's so rich in gas and it just has a problem distributing it to the people. Um, so it's tough, that's kind of tough. But. So this road brings us back to Merida where I just came from and now we're heading this way to another city called Valera. 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 So we were at Cabaja, now we're going to Valera. These are like all small um, cities and neighborhoods right next to each other so we're heading that way. like the people here they come across as very honest hard-working people just very humble people really enjoy that that aspect all right so this uh, looks, looks more like more infrastructure type of town right here seems old but uh, we got a couple blockades here but uh yeah. even in the, the most secluded town the golden arches are still present Oh my god, the golden arches are everywhere, man. I feel like they have the biggest real estate in, in the world. I might be wrong, but this is, this is insane. How much real estate the golden arches have. Cuánto gente vive aquí? Like 35,000 people live in this neighborhood. Oh, que es este? Wow, parece bien. We got like a mall right here. Okay, it is it really built well. Okay. Okay, so we're actually going into the area where the the money is. Okay, this is where the people who got money. This is also a mall right here, guys. They said a lot of people have their money because they got businesses, they own certain businesses and that's why they have money. La cola para gasolina. Oh, here you go, the gasoline line right here, the infamous, and this one, you'll see this all over Venezuela. These lines don't even get longer. This one right here seems short. Well, let's see how long it goes. <laughs> Just to get some gas here, let's go. All right. We're still going up, man. The line is still going up. Yeah. Oh, wow. Wow. Es un cosa normal ahora. Sí. La gente acostumbra de eso. Sí, gasolina casi no hay aquí. Okay. Everybody's accustomed to waiting these ridiculously long lines to get some gas now. Entonces, cuando tome uh, gasolina, tiene que llenar. Mm -hmm. Okay, no quiere regressing. Okay, so when you get gas, you make sure you full up. There's no, no other way of doing it. We've got a park right here. So it's an exercise park right here. Okay. Wow. I was beginning to think it was more of a town type setting but now that I'm in this area this is this does feel like a city and, and, and I guess uh, todo ese fila para entrar aquí. so all that line was just to get here wow wow so in this zone this is a zone for money yeah, they're telling me you can get a house for around 80 to 100 grand here this is the hotel I'm going to guys it's a very chic boutique type hotel and it looks like there's a party happening over there Hey man, I made it here and this place is like paradise, man. I'm in a really nice hotel. This hotel has a pool in it. Let me show you real quick. I pay $50 um, a night. Uh, I haven't checked the internet yet. This internet though, you know what I mean? But it's not, I don't think it's the best, at least not in the room. Um, but it works. 
and so and apparently there's supposed to be a party here today um tonight so i think i came at a good time but got the pool right here and then they get, this is uh we're on the rooftop but then this is another floor and then there's another floor for a bar so it's a bar here bar here and um bar on another floor and then the rooms it's a really uh decent spot man decent spot um this is like 20 minutes from where the girls live and they actually didn't even know about this place but uh yeah we're enjoying our time having drinks yes i'm loving it pretty good bonita <laughs> record this so this is after and man, people want me to hang out still with them so but I'm like yo I wanted to show you the place okay so this is how the place looks it's like a Mexican spot yo and they were playing Com Colombian music and the Venezuelans like yo this is Colombian music it was I was laughing because it's like a music Colombian music and a Mexican spot like they, you know and then they start playing some Mexican music so it was lit yo it was a really good energy and these people here Come and tell me Lupe, Lupe, La Lupe. La Lupe, yo. Come out here, bro. It's this lit. And we came out here, when we came out here, they had like a private party, and then the people left. It's like, okay, yeah, I can come back in. But normally a lot of the good, doing well Venezuelans come out here, right? There is a contrast. All right, like I met these guys from my hotel, and I ended up coming up? here because they invited me. It's like my hotel's across the street, by the way. Mm-hmm. Hola, she's a cutie pie. She's very beautiful. <laughs> nice to meet you, baby. She, she, she knows it. She knows it. She knows it. All right, yeah. Interesting enough, guys, I am getting to see more of the city. Okay, so uh, cathedral over there, and this is the mayor's office. We're getting a real cool, cool look of uh, the downtown area of uh, this city, Valeria. It's called Valera, Valera. Ba Valera. Valera. I'm sorry if I said it wrong. It's the city of the Seven Hills. The city of the Seven Hills. This is a beautiful city. I love it. I, I fall in love here with this place already. Oh, let's uh, see when you when, when you see the, the women here. And the I don't know. That. I can't put this in the video. Oh, you me. <laughs> I'm joking. <laughs> this guy is making me laugh. I can't record properly <laughs> with this guy. I'm telling you right now. <laughs> I can't record properly. He just makes me laugh. Man, he's just a very knowledgeable guy. He is a teacher. He teaches uh, language, Spanish. And so I'm going to put his information in the description. And, I, you know, I'm getting a different perspective of, uh, you know, just an uh, example of a place how Venezuelan people live. I mean, this is not the major city. We're out of the bubble at the moment. A lot of social programs that, that they have in Caracas they don't have it here migration what has uh, migration been like because I know you wrote an article about it um, well oh yes uh, I have written a couple of articles about migration and the first uh, effect uh, we felt here in the country 
is when we arrived, when we realized our universities and schools were empty. Really? Yeah. Oh yes, crowded uh, classrooms uh, with 15 students, uh, sometimes 20, 30 students became uh, empty classrooms like uh, with five students or no students at all. Why was that? Because of... Because uh, the situation in the country uh, became harder and harder because of the political um, chaos and uh, economic uh, situation. Uh, the average uh, uh, salary of a Venezuelan was like one dollar monthly. Okay. So, can you figure out how hard is it uh, to teach and survive? Yeah, yeah. So, I as a you. teacher, I, I used around three dollars monthly, and it was. Uh, until uh, December last year. Wow. Three dollars. Literally three dollars. And it is not an exaggeration. And how can uh, a person uh, live with three dollars monthly? No one can. So that's why uh, we, we do a lot of things to, to survive well. Uh, uh, as you can see, I'm trying to help you. Yeah, he's like a jack of trades, guys. So he has, he, you know, can you rate the school system here? Is it top notch the, as, far, as far as the education? Because some may say people left because the education wasn't a par. Or was it really good education here? Uh, it's, it, uh, I mean, um, um, in Venezuela, we have private schools, we have public schools, we have private universities, and we have public universities. And also, among the private, the public universities, we have uh, government-controlled universities, and the other type of university that is, is what we call uh, Universidades Autonomas, or Autonomous Universities. It, it, uh, it, it, where the government uh, has no control over there. So, uh, contents are uh, updated and we, we do research. Uh, so the autonomy uh, university might be the one people want to go to or it doesn't matter? Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. And uh, a phenomenon that is taking place or has been taking place in my country is uh, uh, education uh, in which students uh, leave the classrooms. They left the classroom to move to another country. That's what we call students with limited and interrupted education. Mm. The students uh, who stop studying to move to another country to work, not to study. They are working to send money to the, their families in Venezuela. So it's hard for them because uh, very often they cannot keep on studying and finishing their, their careers there. They cannot do that. So it is difficult, it is dramatic. Oh, what you know, kind of toll does that take in terms of the future of uh, the... Three years ago, you, uh, may, may, maybe, or perhaps you, you're not going to believe what I'm gonna come to say right now, but I lost like uh, 30 kilograms because of the crisis. Oh, you were bigger? Oh, yeah. Okay. I used to be like, but I lost. You know what is, uh, what is, what it feels uh, when, when, when you realize you're losing uh, weight without your, without making a diet. If without diet, a diet, I wish, uh, you know what I mean? Uh, yeah, yeah, <laughs> uh, but yes, and that, that's, that happened here in my country. Inversiones, la parte to think that since a lot of kids are leaving to pursue education in other countries, what the, will happen to the future of the economy here in Venezuela when there, a lot of professionals are not living here? Unless they come back, but I doubt it if they're not gonna get paid the way they want to. Everybody's just looking out for their family at the moment. In 2017, we used to wake up at 2 a.m. to stay on the line to buy uh, food. In the grocery, to go into the grocery store? Yeah, in the grocery stores here in downtown. It, 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 it was terrible, dark times, such. I, I, I don't want those times to come back again. I'm sure nobody wants that, actually. Nowadays, yeah. the, the country didn't return to normal. It's kind of feeling like... Um, a little bit better, it's better. A, a little bit, just a little bit, but the country is not, the, is, all the problems are not solved. You know, just a little bit. 
you feel like uh, there is an, uh, a feeling that uh, the, the, the economics is trying to uh, get him better. Okay, so you feel like there's something stirring up with the economy here. Yeah. But it's not there yet, but it's something stirring up. Yeah, but, Could it be but, because but of the I dollar? don't mean that the, the, the country is fixed and every, everything is wonderful. Yeah. No, it's not like that. Uh, because we still, uh, salaries are low. Uh, one person is earning um, 30, $30. A month, 20, some people 20. Per month. Let me ask you, uh, so what gives you that feeling? Because you see more people outside purchasing things, or oh yeah, you you see people um, buying stuff on the supermarkets, and you see people drinking on the streets, and you know that's something we we, we, we you you did not see it, uh, two years ago or three years ago. Was the crime rate higher then, or has it been the crime as far as crime? Is it going lower or higher? Crime. Yeah. So many criminals, uh, it's hard to say this, so many criminals <laughs> us, uh, moved to uh, neighboring countries like okay. Colombia, like um, uh, Peru. Because that's what you said, there was one, one wave of migration was the students. Yes. What, what was the other waves you mentioned? Uh, uh, young uh, workers, uh, young workers. Uh, um, you know, the, the new generations that are, are supposed to, uh, to rebuild the country they left and uh, young people like me here it is it, not the case uh, or so many young people living in, in the country um, working uh, a lot of people most of the young people um, uh, left the country and the reason why it's because they're young enough they're strong enough yeah, to survive in another they country strong enough to uh, to get used to work 12 hours or more than, than 12 hours uh, um, they, they, they can uh, work until midnight or you know it, it's, it's not the same uh, what person with 60 years old or 70 years old to do the same it, it, it could be much harder for a, for an older person to do and then when we were talking about education I was just thinking um, in terms of well if you have so many people who are leaving to pursue education in another country what does that mean for the future of the economy here when you don't have professionals here yeah like doctors uh, and engineers and oh the the, the, the sad uh, thing here is is that most of the people that left the country uh, haven't been able to pursue this, their stu studies ah. there because of the le their legal yeah, situation oh, you're right, you're right. and because of the money mm. or, or they send money to their families in Venezuela or they study or they do something else but it is one thing or the other okay so uh, what the implications of, of, of those massive movements of young people to another country uh, is that um, we, 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 we don't have uh, young people or, or the, uh, the young force uh, to uh, rebuild the country. Uh, in the future, we will see the results of, of this. Uh, we will see the results in terms of education, in, ter in terms of job, in terms of uh, even in terms of uh, school and university uh, students population so it is hard the implications are so hard so uh, but I besides uh, despite all these aspects I consider that if if the country improves a lot of people is going to return uh, I made uh, a study um, in which I, I interviewed with, uh, uh, they were like 20 students, university, former university students uh, interrupted their education to move to the United States, Spain, Latin America. And one of the items I remember, uh, I, I called it the, the hope item. I asked them, uh, would you return to your country if the situation uh, gets better? And almost 92% uh, of the answers were yes. If if the if the country returns, if democracy returns, I will return to my country. And you know, well, on the flip side, a lot of them have claimed that they created new lives mm -hmm. in 
in their the place they're living now they have families there or maybe they're dating someone from that country and now it's it doesn't make sense for them to come back well that's true that's true uh it seems that i mean uh you can say oh yes i would like to return but once you have started a new life uh, when you have a new family uh, it is much harder to, to, to come back why did you because you you're still young why did you decide you know what i'm going to stay here i don't know if you left but why uh, well uh i'm still here because i first of all i have been able to uh, make connections with colleagues okay uh, the united states and europe and latin america and they send me a job offers okay oh, yeah. okay so, so you've been I, able to i do uh, i proofread articles i teach spanish in case so as long spanish as you're classes. able to <laughs> make a living here why leave as long as you're able to make money so you can survive why leave because this is this is your home oh yeah uh, this is my home. Uh, that's the place I want to be. However, my son, I have a, I have a 10 year son and uh, he's living in Chile right now. Uh, so far, I don't have uh, I don't have the, the, the resources the resources to go to visit him. And that's something that kills me uh, all the time because I have that uh, thought, that recurrent thought in my head, okay, my son is there, okay, I need to work. If I work, okay, I work really hard. I do a thousand things to, to live, to earn some money from this, from that. From that. Uh, but it's not enough for me to uh, earn, for example, $2,000 and say, okay, I'm going to visit myself. That's not possible to me right now. Uh, maybe in the future, if I get, uh, if I find the option to uh, work in, for example, United States, uh, teaching Spanish or anything, I, I, I would do it. I, I, I would move there because I need to earn the money to see my son. Mm. I need to do it right now because I'm young. I, I, I don't have another family so far. Yeah. So uh, that's one of the things I want to do. At, I know it, it, it takes time, but I, I know, well, I, know I, I, I will do it. I, I, you're going to do it. I know you're going to do it. But you also mentioned the difficulties of that because you know, in a in a country, well, not every place has internet or power 24 hours oh, yes. a day. <laughs> so it that's is. another uh, the, no power, no internet, okay. no. It's okay, I'm going to tell you what I did. <laughs> oh, I device. I have a USB unit. Yeah. Uh, with a uh, with a ten an extra uh, ten minutes. Uh, extra battery. Extra battery. Uh, so I bought a car battery. And I maintain installation with the uh, uh, with the unit, so I I have battery for more than eight hours. You know that that's so that's how you, that's how you do it, just in case yeah, power goes. Yeah, yeah. Wow. Yeah. So that's how a lot of people do it, right? Some of some in order to keep some extra uh, power. I, I have a friend. Uh, she did it, and I did the same. <laughs> <laughs> I stole the idea. I did it. I'm working because I need to survive. I need to make money. Uh, so I'm teaching Spanish and eu falo também português. Eu estudei línguas estrangeiras. Eu falo também português. Eu parlo francês aussi. Je parle la langue française. And of course, I oh, this guy is amazing, man. This, like I said, guys, there's information in the description. If you want to contact him or ask him, or maybe you want to get a lesson, so you do lessons. Of course. So I'm gonna put all of that in the description, man. Show the man some love, all right? Okay, let's uh, let's figure out some stuff, <laughs> okay? Right. Uh, you said what? Over there, there's a lot of drug dealers. Over there, yeah. Okay, so it, it all comes down. There, there used to be. There used to be a lot of, uh, but nowadays it's different. Why? What happened to the drug dealers? They left or well, they they left. They they kill each other because they have they used to have gangs and they kill each other. Well, I would think the police they, or the they, military did oh, something. They, they like were they were rivals and uh, they kill each other. Hey, okay, so wow. If you are, for example, if you are and this and particularly this area right here, guys. So, so wow. Now it's a little bit peace. Oh yeah. Okay. Do you ever feel danger in here or no? No. Not this city. No, not, not now, but it used to be because when the crisis started and uh, you you realize that a lot of incidents with guns and people robbing other people and uh, happened. Even in my house, uh, I was robbed. Uh, a guy came into my house and uh, pointed me with, with, a, with a gun 
and they took my stuff, my computer, my watches, my camera, everything. They kept you up, up and while they took everything. Yeah, my stuff. Uh, thanks God, uh, nothing serious happened. My, my mother was there. It broke. It broke my heart when the guy, uh, the yeah. guy pointed. Because your mom was there. Yeah, and, and the mother pointed the gun into my my mother, and it was like I was dying. But anyway, uh, it just happened. Uh, we are better right now. This is ca the cathedral over there, and this is uh, the the Bolivar, uh, La nice Plaza little, Bolivar. Mm -hmm, looks nice. Bolivar Square. Nice little plaza right here, guys. Bolivar Square. Okay, so now uh, we are moving to, uh, this is one of the first malls here in the city, Centro Comercial de Vica. This, this, this was the first or one of the first malls, uh, modern malls here. Now, now, this mall right here? Yeah. It used to be a mall. One. Yeah, yeah. It looks it like is. an apartment complex. It is. Yeah, it looks like an apartment complex. And then you got some clothing here? It is not. Now, uh, it is a mall. Uh, but, but it used to be a modern mall here. Mm. The first uh, mechanical staircases were there. Okay, cool. it was it, it was something cool and new when when you uh, were uh, entering into the stairs and you were moving like oh my god. When I was a child, that was uh, a new thing, such a modern thing here. Of course, the time and the situation has done a lot of. Uh, have affected this city and everything. But Valera is a beautiful city, it's a good city. What is this, like a bus? What? Right, this right here, a bus? Ah, when, you know, when the crisis started, no public transportation. We used to use those trucks to move from one place to another as public transportation. Ah, so some people still use those? Oh yeah. <laughs> wow, it's cheaper than using this bus right here. Yeah, it was okay. cheaper, but now a public transportation is returning. Okay, so which is we, another sign that the economy is doing oh, yeah, a little bit better. Yeah, because now we do have gas availability, you can buy gas, you, you stay on the line for so many hours, but you, you, you can buy the gas. When is that gonna get better? How can that get better with the gas lines? Uh, you know, people used to spend like uh, four days or five days. Now, uh, it's three hours. Three hours, even from one day to another. Uh, you stay all night there until the following day. How can it get better? Do they need more gas stations open or? Oh, it, 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 it. Whenever you want, you go to the gas station and, and you have and you put your gas in your vehicle. And if you do it whenever you want, that's okay. That's when I wait, when I I can say okay. Uh, the country is much better. Okay. Because in any normal country, you go to the gas station and you buy whatever you want, and that's it. That's okay. It. But here it's different. It's different, yeah. Well, I just, we just passed a gas station, it was empty. So, I think that's another issue too. Uh-huh. That if they had more opening spots, you know, the country, because in, um, in Caracas, you don't see too, you see line? No. But it's not like that, yeah. you know? But I've been in other places where you see lines and it's <laughs> so long. Yeah. Caracas, like the people are sleeping there. <laughs> yeah, Caracas is a parallel, uh, parallel world. world. Cala yeah. Caracas is a parallel world. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, it's like a fantasy. Oh, transportation terminal. Okay, this is where I would need to go if I wanted to take a... Yeah. Uh, if, if we're going to Cuyagua... Uh, he wants me to go to Cuyagua because he says like the best beaches there. Yeah. Okay. Cuyagua y Los Cayos. Uh, amazing places. Uh, I, I, I invite everyone. Mm -hmm. if, you, if you make it to Venezuela, uh, if you want to go to Cuyagua, the Cayos, or uh, a beautiful and splendid place, um, ask me and invite me, please. And I, <laughs> <laughs> and I will I, and I give you the orientations to go there safely. Okay. Oh, these are the most expensive McDonald's in the world. Yeah, one, one of the most expensive. Uh, well, compared to uh, what people make. It's contradictory. It's very empty, guys. Look at this. Look at how empty is the McDonald's. You wish you could go there and. Today. Okay. I tell you, I treat you. Okay. Let, let's do it. Why people don't go to McDonald's sometimes? Because uh, an hamburger there is like twelve dollars. And if 
you pay seven dollars, eight dollars uh, in the street, uh, you're going you're going to eat twice uh, for less money. But most people eat at home. Yeah, most people eat at home because of the situation. Uh, when the situation is hard, you think about it uh, before spending money uh, unnecessarily. You know. So uh, most people. Uh, uh, eat at home uh, or if they go to work uh, they prepare uh, their lunch before leaving home so that's it basically you can order whatever you want to order oh, the same the same for me uh, okay so when we were in the motorcycle the camera cut off i believe you used the word caracas was like a fantasy land or something oh yeah uh because i don't know uh but in Caracas it's different uh, because uh, you, you don't you don't get uh, electricity interrupted. In some parts, because I hear that happens. Yeah, in but in Caracas, Caracas, it, it, it's not happening right now. Uh, maybe it happens. Maybe is in some uh, towns uh, around Miranda State that is very near Caracas. Oh, you mean it doesn't like they don't have like a three-hour downtime every day? No, no, not that time. Not like like, like it's, it's happening here. In Caracas, it, it, it's, it's, it's not normal when electricity... You mentioned there was like two different parallels, the, the rich and then the, the ones that are the, just getting the, by. The, the, the more humble people, uh, uh, villages and um, towns. Um, of course, uh, I say that uh, it's a different reality because you, if you go to Caracas, you realize uh, there is water service, electricity, internet. Well, I have a friend that stays in the 23 de Enero, mm -hmm. and there's always issues with the water. Sometimes there's no water. Oh, really? Yeah, yeah. It's, it's happening there too. I think it's For like example, at certain home, parts. At home, yeah. uh, that is uh, 15 minutes from from this place. Uh, we have. Spent like 52 days without water service, and that's something that is not going to happen in Caracas, in, and never is going to happen in 23 de Enero because people is going to the streets, and uh, and you know you know what happens. Yeah, that's okay. Maybe the service can be interrupted for one day or two days. Okay, people may regret, but. Uh, the service is going to return soon, but it's not like. Why? Well, why do, do you guys experience like a water issues or power issues? What's going on? What's going on? Okay. Um, um, okay. It's happening because um, there is a sabotage of the electric system mm. by opposers. Uh, oh. That's why the that's what the government says, and I read the newspaper uh, and, I, and, and I read the opinion of some experts uh, on the field, and they uh, and they say that this is happening because there was a lack of investment by the government, who is the responsible of the services in this country, Corpoelic, that is the main um, electricity company, didn't invest when it was required to invest. And if you um, make the same comparison, um, telephone services like uh, Mobilnet or CanTV, uh, those services are terrible right now. Because of what? Lack of investment. Of course, if you don't invest, the system is going to fail at any point. So that's what's happening here. Uh, for example, you have Digitel, that is one of the best telephone lines or mm -hmm. services you can have in the country. In Trujillo, it's not working properly. Sometimes you have connection, internet connection, and sometimes you lost everything. Even you don't, you, you cannot send a message, a test message. Yeah. Lack of investment. If you don't invest in yourself as a person, if you don't buy yourself clothes, if you don't buy yourself uh, shoes, perfume, come on. The same is happening with the services. If you don't don't buy water pumps uh, to the city or antennas, more antennas or antennas there. in the case of telephone uh, services, come on. But uh, isn't that the job of the companies, not the government? But the government is the responsible in this case because uh, CanTV was nationalized. That is a state company. 
So though uh, they are the responsible for for those uh, uh, for that investment. Mm, okay, got you. Okay. Uh, the same it's happening with the uh, water services. The government is uh, a manager of those services, um, those companies. So, uh, you know, uh, in Merida they have that um, that that dolly that brings you to the mountains. What's it called? The um, teleferico. Teleferico. It's it's closed now and it's because something is broken but it's a uh, something that was um, made by another country but the country's not gonna fix it because they're not paying their initial bill for the telephonical built so because they didn't pay the bill the, the company's not gonna Oh, and course, now you're losing you all pay. that tourism money. If you don't pay, you're, they are going to work for you again. Uh, that, that's our, that's uh, that's normal. And now you're if losing. I, if I mm -hmm. teach you Spanish, if I teach you uh, C sessions, if you don't pay me, I, I, I'm probably I'm not going to teach you again. Yeah. So, uh, from the basic uh, example, like in my context, uh, teaching context, if you don't pay me. I don't teach you. Mm -hmm. That's it yeah, is what it is. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, you don't you, you don't have a company to work for free. Come on, come on. If I teach you, it, it's because I need to survive. I need to earn my money. The same is with companies. Uh, the same case. They offer a service, but they get their money for that. Mm -hmm. So if, if the government is not paying, of course they are not going to uh, provide more. Uh, uh, refactions or parts for the system, you know, okay. it's a reality. Okay. destinations in the area we are in through to Riga, and we are going to see the virgin of the peace the peace virgin it's like uh it's like a statue of mary i think you could be wrong but it's a huge statue so i'm saying it's bigger than this than statue of liberty and so i'm gonna show you that and uh yeah this is how we get in here man uh it's interesting to know this car is like goes like 35 miles per hour the most so it's uh, it's challenging for us to get anywhere this vehicle even going up this hill but we, we're doing it we're trying to make it but i just wanted to show you the energy of how we're getting up to uh see this uh monument uh it's not easy baby but we almost there let's go Exercise. <laughs> All right, guys. So uh, the bumblebee wasn't able to make it, so we are going to be taking uh, the rest of the way walking. We're almost there, so we get to see a little bit more of the area. This reminds me of my trip up the hill to Haiti. If you haven't seen that video, go check it out when I went to the Citadel. But now we are going to go check on another monument, but in Venezuela. Before there weren't really roads like this, so people had to walk up to see the monument. So. 
we're getting a little bit of taste of what people had to do to get up here. This uh, place is actually uh, for a Saturday. Feels like a ghost town here. I don't know if a lot of tourism come here or it's because it's Saturday. Maybe on Sunday people come here. But as you can see, ghost, ghost town. Hola, hola. All right, guys, so this is the entrance um, to the monument, La Paz. So just to reiterate how big the statue is, you can see it right here, okay? So these are different monuments they have in the Americas, all right? So you have your Statue of Liberty here, and then you have the one that we're visiting at the moment right now, and then here's the one in Brazil, all right? And I, oh, okay, so Brazil has two large monuments. Okay, I didn't even know about this one right here. Well, there it is. I didn't know about that one. That's bigger than this one. But this one right here is the biggest. <laughs> wow, it feels good to come see something so monumental when this one is the most popular one out of all of them. <laughs> We're literally like the only people here at the moment. Well, you got people here ready just in case there is like a rush of tourism that comes here. Why do you think there's no tourism here? Because of the situation of the pandemic. Ah, todavía. But this was full. Full, full, full. Antes. No, antes. Mm -hmm. Full, full. Wow. Okay, there's an aerial view of the, the statue. Wow, look at it. It's huge. Ah, from the sky you can see it. Wow. And she's holding a, a dove on her right hand. Nice. So basically, guys, it's a uh, five boulevards, which I think is a dollar for each person they have to come for this mo uh, monument. Okay. <laughs> well, I guess this might be some form of museum you can walk in and see. Es una iglesia, ¿qué es este? Okay, so this is a chapel right here, I guess. So if you want to pray next to the statue, you can't do it. So let's take a look inside and see how this place uh, looks, uh, this chapel. guys is interesting here. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Dios estás aquí. Aleluya. Danciate como el aire que respira. Danciate como Uh, believe it or not a lot of people come out here seeking miracles and I think that's for most people they'll go to a church or spiritual areas to seek miracles in fact in this town there was a famous doctor his name was Jose Greg como se llama el hombre Jose Go Jose Gregorio Hernandez Jose Gregorio Hernandez he was basically labeled a doctor for the poor and it was said that he would make miracles happen and so even in this town they immortalize him through statues and even saint statues you'll see um, around the area uh, and he's so important to the, the people in this community so I think a lot of people make these pilgrimages to this area to see maybe if they can find a miracle happening here. So since a lot of people come out here to ask for miracles, I'm gonna ask for a miracle myself. All right, I'm gonna ask that somehow Venezuela gets back into good shape and gets the help that it truly needs and the people can come back to this country and really live this beautiful and fulfilled life they left here. And also I would ask that Venezuela continue to help out the people of Haiti with gas, whatever resources. Um, back in the day, they made a promise to help Haiti out 
and I would help I would hope they would continue to promise in helping the people of Haiti during their turmoil as well. Miracles can happen, but you just have to be patient. Now let's go up the statue right here. The air is so fresh here. Muy fresca. Wow, we are above the clouds, guys. <laughs> Look at this, it's crazy, yo. <laughs> and there it is. This is huge. Wow, this is bigger than the statue of Christ. I think so, I might be wrong, but it feels bigger. And I've been to the one in Cali and the one in Brazil, and even, even in the one in Bucaramanga. And this one is just huge. Apparently her mother is afraid of heights, so I don't know. <laughs> so guys, this basically, here's some information here. So from my understanding, it's uh, Ma El Mas Alta del America. I don't know if that means the biggest monument of this type, but I feel like it is the biggest monument in America. So there you go. Um, you are welcome to correct me if I'm wrong. All right, so let's go. ¿Qué pasa? Eh? All right, so there are elevators here, but unfortunately for your boy, it's not working. Yay! ¿Qué pasa? <laughs> wow. Oh my God, ya entiendes. <laughs> I can see why she'd be afraid. <laughs> I think we're actually right here, guys. So there's like layers to get to the top. So, you got La primera. Nivel de altura, estamos en 18 metros. Oh my God. Desde aquí te encuentras a 18 metros más. Ya entiendes ahora. That's why she didn't want to come up. I understand it now. <laughs> no, like mas. <laughs> wow. So this is where the dove is, guys. Wow. We made it to the dove. Hey, we're here. Oh my God. This is the biggest challenge right here. Two persons can enter here, or only one person? Two persons? Okay. Oh my God. You can. Come on, come on. Okay, dale. Me da miedo. Okay. Y después para bajar. Ay, no. Está bien. Agarrada. Uno por uno, ya seca. Lo que me haces 
eso. She's down, guys. She's crawling on the floor. Un momento, okay? I am I'm trembling, guys. Coming up this thing. Okay, we going down, guys. I'm not going to show you this part. There you go, guys. I told her if she can travel and try to survive in other countries like she has, it should be a cake. It's just the resilience of the Venezuelan people trying to survive this whole trip up this monument and then seeing how people live and just the struggle and seeing a glimpse of it. I truly feel humbled by this experience. If you do too, let me know how you feel about this video. Hit that like button. If you want to see more what happens next on my journey, subscribe, watch another video, subscribe. But I want to say thank you for following me on this journey. Anyways, I'm going to go down, but before I do, I got to remind you to always stay alive. Thanks for watching this video. This is a part of a series of videos of me in Venezuela. If this is your first video, try to watch all the other episodes and catch up so you don't miss what's happening next. I guarantee you, it's going to be crazy. Yo.